modeling and solving linear systems. So some word problems really require modeling a linear system to solve them. So that's what we're going to take a look at today, um, just through some examples. So here's the first example. So during a performance by a drama group, the main act was on stage for three minutes less than twice the time of the opening act. And together, the two acts performed for 132 minutes. And the question is, how long did each act last? Possibly the most confusing part of this question is the part that I've written in blue. Uh, that part really requires us to um, analyze that and change it into an algebraic statement. So we'll be doing that in a second. But um, the very first step for us when we're solving one of these word problems is to come up with some variables. In this case, uh, each act. So one act will be um, x. That's how long it will last. And another act will be y. And write that down um, in a let statement. And I know the units. It's in minutes. And I write down the whole sentence. Um, please. Uh, go through all of that work, it will help you keep organized. Now I need to interpret this three minutes less than twice the time of the opening act. Well, the opening act was x, and if I twice the time of the opening act, I get 2x. And if I do three minutes less than that, I take away three, that's how long the second act was on stage for. It turns out that however long the first act was, when you add it to the second act, you get 132. This is a system, and I can solve this system by using um, a few different ways. Uh, one of the easiest is some technology. So if we can change these two equations into y equals mx plus b, we can solve it by plugging it into the calculator and uh, coming up with a solution which is the point of intersection of the two graphs. So I'll go ahead and do that and see if we can come up with a solution. Okay, so here's how to use the technology to um, to solve this equation. Turn on your TI, go into y equals, and we want to put in our equation. So 2x minus 3 equals y is the same as y equals 2x minus 3. There's our first equation, and the second equation, x plus y equals 132. We need to change into y equals, so that's y equals negative x make sure you use the negative sign not the minus sign plus 132 now if you just try and graph this you might not see much because the window settings aren't set for these two graphs we have to think about well what window settings will work for this performance so in our x direction we're looking at well x was how long um, the first act was going to be, and in the y direction it's how long the second act is going to be, and they could be like a couple hours long. So uh, they're definitely not in the negatives, so we, um, we want to set our window settings. We can start at zero, maybe give ourselves a couple hours, and then the scale, let's just mark off every 10 minutes. And in the y direction, go from zero, maybe up to a couple hours, and mark off every 10 minutes. Now when we graph it, you'll see see, oh, there's an intersection point. And we can try and guess where that is by using the little scroll bar here and, and see. And on the bottom, it reads out the coordinates that it's estimating. But um, calculating it is a lot better. So if we use this blue button here, calculate, you can calculate the intersection. And you hit enter. And it asks you, what's the first curve? Uh, in our case, those are lines. So here's the first line. And yep, that's the second line. And it asks you a guess. And if you want to, you can scroll along and guess where it is. There is only one intersection, so it'll find it without you really having to guess. And now it finds your intersection. So we know that x is 45 and y is 87. And we have a coordinate that we know satisfies the system. So let's go back to our notes and use that. So as we can see using technology, the solution to this system is uh, a coordinate where x is equal to 45 and y is equal to 87. And so we can interpret that as a final answer to this uh, in a word um, 
a statement or in a sentence. So the answer to how long did each act, uh, each act last is act one was 45 minutes and act two was 87 minutes. Okay, let's take a look at another example. Okay, so two pools start draining at the same time. The larger pool contains uh, 54,675 liters of water and drains at 25 liters per minute. The smaller pool drains at 10 liters a minute and has an initial amount of 35,400 liters of water in it. And our question is, when do the pools have the same amount of water in them? And the let statement is, um, we need a variable to be how many minutes, um, because that's when do the pools have the same amount of water. So uh, let's use the letter x to say how many minutes we have to wait. And then, just to get ourselves organized, we've got a larger pool that's got a whole bunch of water with water leaving it, and each minute 25 less liters of water are in it. So the amount of water in the larger pool looks like this. 54,675 liters are currently in there, and it's losing 25 liters every minute, so this is time in minutes. And similarly for the small pool, for the small pool you start off with 35,400 and you're losing 10 every minute. So we can interpret this as um, the amount of water in the larger pool has to be equal to the amount of water in the smaller pool since we have an equation for the amount of water in the larger pool and we have an equation for the amount of water in the smaller pool, we can solve these two equations and find out when they're equal to each other. And again, we'll use some technology to do this, and uh, let's do that on the graphing calculator. So as you can see on the calculator, the intersection on this one was 1,285 and 22,550. And we really only care about the x value because the x value is the amount of time that it's taken to get to being equal in both pools uh, for their volume. So let's interpret that as our answer. Uh, it takes 1,285 minutes for the pools to have the same amount of um, water in them. Now, most people don't talk in minutes when they get to big numbers like this, so you can translate that into hours by dividing by 60. You can translate that into days if it's going to take longer than one day to drain these pools. Um, but I'll leave that as a task to you. So similar to our last uh, time we were using the calculator, we'll go into y equals. I've cleared out our programs, and let's put in our functions. One of them was 54,675 is losing 25x, and the other one was 35,400, which is losing 10x. And just like we did before, if we hit graph, we're going to use whatever window settings there were before. So again, think about x. Well, how long is this going to take, and how much? water is going to be in the pool is going to be my y value and those could be pretty big numbers so maybe I'm just going to guess like I don't know a thousand for x and give me a tick mark every hundred a thousand minutes it's a long time but uh, if I go too big it's easier than going too small and uh, I know that the amount of water in the pool is going to be pretty big number so let's go like I don't know 100,000 liters of water and mark off every thousand. If you graph this, oh good, we actually can see some lines. Oh, and they don't quite meet. I need to go further in the x. I didn't need to go quite as high in the y. So I can change some of these window settings. Maybe not go quite as high in the y, just go up to 75,000. But I need to go further in the x. And this is really important because you can't use this calculate feature unless the calculator can actually see the point of intersection. So now we can go calculate, you can press number 5, first curve, second curve, and guess, and it tells you that the x value is 1,285 when the y value is 22,550. And so let's put that in our notes and use it.